right, hey, this is Rustin with Metalholic Magazine and Mojo Radio with me, Harry Jensen of Tear. And I can't even pronounce the name of your other band. Is it Hell Yard? <laughs> How do you pronounce that? <laughs> Hell Yard, yeah. Yeah, the hell you yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, um, well, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my pleasure. Um, the new album, The Lay of the Thrim, is yeah, yeah. out. Uh, excellent album. Um, how's the fan response been so far, so th- so much that you've heard? Oh, it's been really good. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of new fans, especially. Some of the old fans are not so pleased with the less uh, progressive uh, approach, but... Um, I think we, we uh, hit a broader mass with, with um, the new sound. Now, and, and you mentioned this, this is one of my questions, was that the new album does seem a little less progressive, more simplified. Uh, was that an intentional thing? Yeah, absolutely. Trying to um, to sort of streamline the songwriting, put less, um, you know, instrumental show off and, and details into it and, and concentrate more on just making a good song. In terms of sound on the new album, how does the new record, in your mind, compare to By the Light of the Northern Star, your previous record? I would say that probably the um, two most similar albums. The big change, I think, was before, uh, between Land and By the Light of the Northern Star, going a bit away from from, uh, the the direct folk approach and um, from the progressive um, instrumental approach. And over to, to the just you know basic uh, good songwriting, um, but still I think this one uh, we pulled this one off a bit better than the last one. So the lay of the thrym is sort of a progression from by the light of the northern star rather than. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. And, and you did this. This one was based on the theme of uh, the guy or character who stole Thor's hammer, correct? Exactly. Is the that, king of the giants. Yeah. Why did you choose that this time around? Uh, actually, uh, the, the first uh, uh, subject I chose for the album was was the um, uh, the revolutions we're seeing in Northern Africa and, and the Middle East at the moment. And uh, I started writing some lyrics and turned out pretty political. So I sort of put this, um, you know, thrown the dictator, uh, superimposed it o- over over that. And, and Thor is, is, is the liberator or or the uh, uh, the revolutionist, and, and the hammer is, is the power and the weapons and so on. It's um, you know comparison. Or, or um, I, th- those two uh, are like parallel. Um, uh, how, do, how do you say it? The, the myth is used as a parallel to uh, to present day political events. Right now, you haven't really done that much in the past, have you? It's Actually, been... I have. Only never, um, n- not as obviously as as now. Even on on um, already on on Earth the Red and every album in between, I- I've done that. Yes. Uh, yeah, because I was going to say, lyrically, you adopted more modern themes on this record. You you did. You talked about the uprisings in Africa, although sort of veiled under that North mythology. Uh, you even have a song on there called Shadow of the Swastika, obviously, which has nothing to do with, with uh, your traditional yeah. stuff. Yeah. Are you a particularly political person? Yeah, I would say I am. I, I'm very interested in, in politics, and uh, I keep up with, with you know the international situation. Yeah, I, I would say I definitely am. You said um, that on, on previous albums you would sort of, you know, you, you're sort of contrasting yeah. your, your lyrical themes sort of buried in the North mythology like you did on this yeah, record. exactly. Um, is that hard for you to write that way, trying to write specifically about something that is of interest yeah, to you? Yeah, it has been. Uh, uh, it's much easier with the way I did it on this album to have the underlying meaning be more, more apparent it's much easier to write that way. Because the other way, you have to first uh, have a, a political message or a philosoph- philosophical message or, or, or personal or message or, or something. And then you have to find a way to um, put it in, in a mythological universe. And it takes much more work. And it takes much more, um, you know, tinkering with the details. This, uh, for example, Shadow of the Swati is extremely straightforward. What, you know, what, what you read is what there is. There's no underlying anything. It's much easier to write like that. Uh, There's no doubt about that. Do you think fans are going to have an issue with the fact that that it it sort of gets away a little bit from your traditional writing style to to something that is less convoluted in terms of the lyrical content? They can actually see what you're talking about? I know some uh, of of the old fans already uh, said they, they don't like this as much as the old albums. can't remember anyone directly disliking it, but... um, this is not those who, who uh, 
you know, came to like us because of, for example, for example, uh, the Ragnarok album, are not extremely uh, impressed with this. Is it hard for a band when you're writing songs? Because as a musician, you want to write music for yourself first and the fans second. Um, because obviously, music's your passion, and you just hope other people like it. Is it hard for you as a songwriter to sort of temper what you're writing artistically when you're still trying to appeal to people who have to buy the record? With, with this band, um, I try to take into consideration that, that someone has to like the music, well, as many people as possible. And uh, that's a clear reason to take out the progressive sides of the music. Also, you, you spend less time in studio. It's less work writing the music because, you know, not being progressive, of course, it's simpler, easier to perform also. So I would be lying if I said there's no consideration for the audience. As you mentioned before, I have a side project in which into which I pour my progressive output so that I, I can release that too. So and, and, and in there, I don't take into consideration at all that someone has to listen to it. I, I just write whatever I like. Now, um, speaking of which, what is going on with Heliarga Project? Uh, you know you guys already did the one album. Uh, I spoke briefly with Ken... Uh, Ken from the Apocryphal Order, who I believe is in that project with you. Yeah, he is. What's going on with that project, and and when what might we see something new from that? Um, I'm working on material at the moment. I don't know uh, when um, or how uh, it'll be released, but um, I hope to make at least two more albums, as we have two more albums in the contract with uh, Tuk, Tuk okay. Records in Paris. Okay. And um, yeah, I, ha- I have a lot of material, and uh, just need to, need to work through it and see maybe a, in a year or two it could be released gotcha so it's going to be a while before we hear something new there um yeah not not anything um now with you guys because b- actually both bands are sort of pretty spread out but with uh tier having everybody spread out in different countries how does the writing process work in the bands is it pretty much you now or do you work on the writing with the other guys we, we write in uh, notes mostly uh, I, I put the notes in, in on the, the Guitar Pro uh, program and I send, send the files to the guys. And I also record uh, demos here and, and uh, send it to them as well. And they send me their ideas and I, I work them through and, and uh, arrange the songs here as well. And, you know, we change opinions over the Internet. And, for example, for this album, we never rehearsed together before we were in studio. And um, that's how it works. That's how it's been working for... Yeah, ever since Ragnarok. Now, I know, obviously, some of that's necessity because of where everybody's at, but do you feel like coming together for the first time to do the songs sort of keeps it the sound fresher when you guys go into the studio? Maybe that it does, but uh, there's, a, there's a downside to it, clearly. If you had more time to, uh, you know, work on it, uh, it's a very unsatisfying feeling to... Uh, after you release the album, get an idea, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. And uh, that happens unnecessarily much when you do it like this. Uh, it would have been better to, I think, to get the band together for, for a weekend and, and rehearse the songs before going in the studio. Right, because uh, obviously when you play, the more you play the song, the more it progresses, the more you come up with new ideas and little nuances, right? Yeah, it, it's not so much coming up with new ideas, it's more... It's more adjusting and finding the ideas you already have or even getting rid of ideas is, is much more common than getting new ideas. Usually, uh, in this band at least, you would put too much in simply and, and should have uh, done a bit less. So now what's going on in terms of touring? Are, are you guys going to be m- basically over in Europe all, all summer? Are you coming to the States? We have uh, quite a few festivals in, in Europe this summer and then uh, we have some uh, South America stuff coming up. And hopefully we'll make a short trip to, to the U.S. after that. But but nothing of that is confirmed yet, so um, I can't tell you yet. Right. We will definitely come uh, to the States either uh, later this year or uh, or early next year. There's, there's no... Uh, I'm sure they're working on it. I, I have no details yet. Right. Are, are there places that you haven't gone that you would like to play? Yeah. Um, Australia, uh, South America, but of course now we're going... So, uh, or, or hopefully we'll be going, it's very likely. Uh, look forward to that. Um, Japan, uh, other places in Asia, like maybe China or and, uh, and the Middle East. 
but that's not the place for uh, pagans at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get a lot of lashback for uh, the, sort of the pagan thing, claims of racism, stuff like that, especially in Europe? No, very little. Um, and uh, I respond very aggressively to what, what I get of that. As you see in the song, um, no, there's, uh, we don't, it's not a big problem for us. But the whole, uh, the whole thing with this, um, with this uh, taboo about uh, stuff that is connected to, or was connected to, to the Nazis, like runes and Nord Nordic mythology, uh, is an issue I, that I simply would not accept, that these things uh, make people think that, that one is Nazi. And uh, it's also the reason I, I wrote the song. So I would say we personally and, and as a bat have very, very small problems with this, but it's just... Uh, just uh, a problem that I wish to, to change or I, I wish to, um, you know, make it go away. Right. So uh, when you go out on tour uh, for the new album, how much of the uh, the new album, The Lay of the Thrim, uh, can fans expect to hear? Uh, we played a concert a few days ago, uh, a festival, and I think we played three songs. We'd like to play more, uh, three to five songs from the new album. Now I, I know um, the, obviously you love every song that you that you write or you wouldn't have written it. But are there any songs on this album that are particularly close to your heart that that really have a further meaning for you? Well, probably uh, the Evening Star, the ballad. And, and what what about that one? It really calls to you. Well, I, I wrote it um, again with with two uh, things in mind: a mythological level and and. and uh, personal level um, you may see it from the from the angle of Thor uh, traveling to uh, Jotunheim to uh, retrieve his hammer and you may also see it as I did uh, as, as uh, uh, written to my girlfriend about uh, you know missing someone while, while being far away being on tour for example now you guys recorded uh, a, a couple of bonus songs a couple of covers you did uh, a Black Sabbath cover and a rainbow cover. What made you choose those two? It's a very simple reason. Um, we chose four songs to cover, and they were, they were the uh, all-time favorite song of each band member. And uh, I, by Black Sabbath, is my favorite heavy metal song of all time. And uh, the other one, uh, Stargazer, by Rainbow, is Carter, the drummer's favorite song of all time. So and we decided to cover those two instead of the other two possible possibilities uh, since I um, wanted to make it uh, in his honor. Right, Ronnie's passing. Um, so just just out of total curiosity, what were the other two covers that uh, the other two band members want and hopefully uh, someday here? Yeah, should be on the next album. Uh, Talia's favorite uh, is uh, Cemetery Gates by Pantera. Nice. And Myers is uh, What Eagles Dare by Iron Maiden. Nice, excellent choices, all of them. Well, Harry, I appreciate. So yeah, I appreciate your taking the time to talk with us about the new album. Do you have any final words? Anything you'd like to say to the fans that are out there listening? Yes, please, please buy our albums and uh, come to our concerts once we get to the U.S. Absolutely, you got to support the metal, otherwise bands won't be able to keep making it for us. So. Exactly. Harry, once again, thanks a lot for taking the time. We'll look forward to seeing you. Yeah, and thanks. Thanks. Uh, have a nice day. You too. Take care.